It's time for the Good Morning Show with Terry and Melissa. Grab your coffee, your Bible, a pen, and your journal. It's time to be encouraged. And now here are your hosts, Terry and Melissa. Good morning. Good yes. morning. I also also pulled a Melissa there. <laughs> There have been you a few forgot times. Your, you forgot your microphone, there didn't you? a few you? times, yeah. Aw, bless your heart. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Good Morning Show with Terry and Melissa. We're so glad to be with you today. That's right. It is Monday, Monday Morning Motivation. This is episode 172. We hope that wherever you are, you're having a great start to your week. And if you're not, you're in the right place. And if you are, you're in the right place because you're here to encourage us as well. Hey, it works both ways. But you know what? It doesn't work unless we know that you're here. And we do not know that you're here unless you type in your chat box and let us know whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, you're watching watching on the website. Maybe you're listening by podcast. Hey, we want to know you're here. So type in your chat box. Let us know where you're tuning in from this morning. And we really do have a very important question that we'd like to know the answer to. And that is this. What is in your cup? That's right. We care about what you're drinking. We care about where you're at. We care about who you are because we love you. That's right. That's right. So let's jump. Oh, I was going to say that. Go ahead. Let's jump over to the chat box this morning and give a great big hi there. And hello to Monica in Nebraska. Good morning, Monica. We love you, sweet sister. It's great to have you on. As usual, you are a dear one to me. Good morning, Becky. Becky Mangianas. Mangianas. Please don't correct me. No, I'm I, so I was proud of myself for getting it. it better. Am I, I not? Okay. It. Well, good morning, Becky. I love you, sweet sister. It's a good fun morning, name. Chris. Chris back in the house. Good morning. This morning. David Ramsey from Illinois, Danville, Illinois. He's finally able to catch a few minutes on the show. Good to and see he's you drinking on OJ. We're gonna see them this weekend. We're going to see him this yeah. week. That's correct. It is Bluegrass Awakening Week. It's prayer conference week, y'all. I love prayer conference. There's little I love as much as prayer conference. So It's going to be good. Look at this. Pastor Roger in the house. Go Chiefs is Go right. Chiefs. That's it. Our Chiefs are they representing. It, it was night. quite an exciting game, I hear. I had to stop watching after the first little bit because I was pretty stressed out. <laughs> also, I was, was pretty really exhausted, good. which we'll talk about that later. Um, good morning, Robin. Robin from Fort Knox, Kentucky. Kentucky. She's drinking Starbucks pistachio latte this morning. Oh, I am I kind of very interested in checking out the pistachio drinks. I more. first had that in Chicago O'Hare Airport. Remember when I was uh, flying out yes, to Kansas I do, City? Yes, I do, I uh, do, I do. A year ago or so. Yeah. That was good. I love the pistachio. Good ones. morning, Robin. We love you. Michelle. Good morning, good, hey, good morning guys, Michelle. It's great to see you this morning. We're waving right back at you. We love you, sweet sister. MK, just down the street here in Shelbyville, Kentucky, she's having good iced morning. decaf Starbucks cafe. Verona coffee with half and half in her cup this morning. And it's prayer conference week for MK as well. Janice, Janice, she's our gal. We love her. And she's coming from Spring, Texas, which is also Houston. And she's yeah. drinking Strawberry Spark this they morning. Got strawberry? Yep. And Janice brings Whoa. the spark everywhere she goes for Jesus. That's right. Spark we for life. We love you. We love you, Janice. <laughs> Pastor Daniel Rogers, now from West Virginia, because he thinks he is a big boy and he's grown out of Kentucky. And I want you to know, buddy, Kentucky misses you. Well, you know, that's but. funny because he puts the Country Roads reference in there for those of you that know the, the old Country John Roads, Denver song. Take me home, West yep. Virginia. Mm-hmm. So... He's checking in. Today's cup is Kroger brand donut store blend because hashtag we fancy. (laughs) (laughs) Love you, Daniel. Miss you like crazy. Going to be so strange doing district stuff and not seeing and hugging your face. Oh, for sure. Love you guys. For sure. Maybe we'll leave uh, uh, a microphone stand just by itself. The honorary honorary microphone stand. Like we leave a chair at the board meeting for Holy Spirit. Spirit. We'll leave a Daniel Rogers microphone out there. Robin says, great message yesterday. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful day in the Lord. Uh, The Lord has been so present at River City the last three weeks. It has been really, really him. Just so moving. It's been great. Uh, Becky said she finished her Starbucks Spring Day blend and moved on to spiced blackberry tea. That Mm. sounds delicious. I love blackberry and I love tea, so I think I might be down with that. Dave says he cannot wait for prayer conference this week. And Michelle says, go Chiefs. That's right. Go Chiefs. Yeah. Dave Dave and uh, Kathy will get to see their, their boy. 
David. Yeah, they're not and just coming for us. No, yeah. they have a little extra motivation there for sure. as well. And I know they love Corey and, of course, Kenny Greenway as well. So oh, yeah. it'll be really good. It's going to be outstanding. Yeah. And, and you know, it's something that um, we started last year in Bowling Green uh, with this prayer conference. And it's really cool because Thursday evening we kick things off, you know, in the evening and have some worship. And then one of the speakers uh, um, delivers a message and just really gets things going. And then Friday morning, again, with worship after breakfast. And then we have um, we have uh, breakout sessions that we'll have where there you're teaching a breakout session. I am. Um, I am. Uh, and then you have various speakers who will go to like different classrooms and different things. And you yep. can go and listen and learn about various um, topics. What's your topic going to be? You um, I'm teaching. Peek? I'm teaching on why we need to become a house of prayer. Not mm-hmm. just that we should do it. Not just about corporate prayer, but literally why it's important. So because if we don't really have a why, we don't usually stick to something. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about what it really looks like and why it's important to have and be a house of prayer that hosts regular corporate prayer meetings. Well, in the why, will we also get a little bit of the how? You know, um, it's Is very that- difficult for me not to talk about how to implement right. why we're doing what we're doing. So yeah, I'm sure I, I'll I talk was- a little bit about implementation. Yeah. You know, honestly, um, I know here we are just a few days before the conference. The Lord is still downloading to me just really what my message is going to look like. I honestly thought when um, Dr. Powell asked me to speak that I would I would share on something else. Really? And I feel like the Lord is, is really changing and tweaking yeah. that. And I want to be obedient to what the Holy Spirit's leading is for this particular conference cool. so it's still coming yeah that's good pastor ruth is in the house hey. Morgantown, kentucky she says good morning i'm Hold drinking on. in sunshine Hold on. oh wait that's your is that that's your mother my mommy that's your mother yeah <laughs> oh because pastor ruth is ruth morgan right. i'm still this getting is, used to this this is my mommy and good morning mommy drinking i love you sunshine. so much she's drinking in sunshine you guys have sunshine wow we've become the yeah. seattle of the south it just <laughs> rains and is cloudy here Oh, hey, man. there's Pastor Rick. Pastor Rick's in the house with Maxwell House in his Harley Cup this morning. There you go. That sounds really good, Pastor. And Otis says, good morning, Otis. How are you feeling? We have been praying for you and praying yeah, that buddy. the Lord would really heal you, you and you would just shake we... all this nasty junk off in Jesus' name. Yes, we miss you yesterday, but we, we understand. We do miss you when you're not yeah. with us. Also, um, ooh, this crazy. Look at that. That's mm. like some crazy um, out oh, of wow. country you're getting a phone call from maybe it's Jesus. It might be from like India or something. I'm not sure. That was an out. It, that was the India prefix calling me. No, no. I didn't answer it. Um, Robin said she's excited to see Kenny Greenway this week. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Otis is letting Robin know that he has done the dishes today. Very good, (laughs) Otis. Roger is saying, thinking about pulling the Harley out this morning. Now, listen, Pastor Rick and Pastor Roger might be brothers from another mother in another state, and they don't even know each other. That's right. That's right. Well, and Roger's in the same town as your mom. So knowing that the sun is shining out there, it would be a good day to get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Hey, looky here. My girl's in the house. Not only is my mom in the house, my girl in the house and that means my grand girls are in the house good morning taylor good morning asher, morning, june. asher. good morning riley. riley mimi and pop love you so much love you taylor taylor's in ohio columbus ohio she's drinking caribou coffee with some some half and half and mocha syrup that sounds delicious you guys remind me in a little bit to tell you what i had this weekend at big b um oh. because i absolutely loved it i went nuts over it and john tucker's hey, in the house from kansas john city tucker. John, we love you. Welcome on a Monday morning to the Good Morning Show. Say hi Janice to Linda. says, that's right, say a great big hello. Go squeeze Linda for us. Hug her hard. We love Linda and John. Janice says they've got sunshine there in Houston as well. Whoa. She took a walk outside. Hey, hey, hey. That's good. I love this. <laughs> I want you to share your sun with me, though. I'm ready for some sun. Mm. Yeah, it's been, uh, I don't know, well, several days since so we So I was the thinking this morning, you know, I don't mind winter. I kind of like winter. I'm built for winter. I have lots of insulation. And so I'm not usually opposed. Fall is my favorite time of year. I dig winter. Um, but this morning I woke up and I thought, you know what? I'm already ready for some spring in here. Yes. And I thought I might, I like um, to use the uh, air wick refills, the scent things that kind of permeate through your house. And I thought, I'm, I'm we have a winter scent right now. And I'm like, I'm I think I'm going to get some spring scents yeah. today. I mean, it's been so wet here because of all the rain. Mm-hmm. In fact, the path out there by the, the hen house and the, the run, mm-hmm. uh, because I'm going out there every day, and it's I had to build a little, like a 
a little bridge ladder system on the ground to walk on because you're sinking pallets, into the yard sinking into the yeah dirt, it's the really mud. really wet five six inches sinking down i am so glad i got those mud boots look at this here boots. look at this here missy's in the house good morning missy hey, jersey missy. how we love you and she's drinking peppermint tea and then my good. sister is right beneath her and she's in the house and she's drinking peppermint tea so way to go girls my there favorites out there with the peppermint tea this morning um candace said that was actually her trying to call from vacation um she's actually totally kidding that wasn't her (laughs) and also she's um got a little almond milk in her peppermint tea i do i do like a little cream or milk in my tea sometimes i've i don't know english style Well, i'm kind of you know it's like raise the pinky it's pretty classy i think it's pretty yeah schwanky yeah (laughs) that's me don't you know everybody thinks of me when they say that oh well and so monica says it's blue skies and 31 degrees there so it's great it's like the the yuckies moving out huh i hope so and D, Pastor D's in the house. All of my favorites, with the exception of a couple, are here this morning. You this mean a is couple a, that are on aren't your favorites, or a couple no, no, favorites no, 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 are not no. on? A couple of okay. my favorites Just aren't on. Clarify, all of you all are my favorites. But yeah. check this out. Pastor D's drinking community coffee, and it's Mardi Gras. Mardi, Mardi Gras. Gras. It sounds like a, wow. it's like a party in your mouth. <laughs> right? <laughs> Woo! And Janice says, Missy! Why? Oh. Because she loves Missy. <laughs> and Missy loves Janice. I love how much you guys love each other. Dave Ramsey says, sorry, but he's got to go. We'll see you Thursday. Right, we'll hey, we'll Thursday see you Thursday evening, night. We love you so much. Hey, here's some exciting news about the prayer conference that's coming up this weekend. Is that um, like last week was the deadline to register. But we have some late registered and the Lord's working it out. We've got people yesterday that were like, we really feel like we want to come. And so the Lord has already opened the door and made the way. So even past registration deadline, I love how we're getting more people to come. As of now, we have 17 people from River City coming to the prayer Bluegrass Awakening Prayer Conference. And I'm super pumped about that. Um, And check this out. Um, MK is loving on everybody this morning and saying a good morning to Robin and Otis and Missy. Missy's saying good morning to Janice. And Monica says, I saw my first Robin yesterday before church. I thought I heard the birds singing when I stepped outside. And I was Mm. like, are you all sure? I mean, it's cold still. but. I know. I was just asking the other day because it was a really yucky day. I was like, how many more weeks until winter? And I was like, we're not even to February 2nd yet. Yeah. Well, we're going to, we're going to believe for spring. Hey, look at this. Master Pastor Yoda's in the house. You guys, it's been so long since we've all said hi there and good morning to Master Pastor Yoda. He's headed to the dentist shortly. So no coffee yet. No. I'm sad for two reasons. One, the dentist is probably one of my least favorite places to go. Mm -hmm. I just do not dig that. And secondly, no coffee is always sad but you're gonna have coffee afterward no doubt right it's good okay yeah pastor d says it is a party in her mouth <laughs> times two <laughs> otis says um i i told robin to let you know i wasn't sick enough to pray for i heard that message that doesn't stop me from he praying said, i will Th- live thank thank <laughs> you for living and thank you for your consideration but i love you too much not to pray you just need to know that oh well, well it's um it's- hey it's interesting because when we were talking about Otis and about situations and witnessing, I'm going to talk and reference that a little bit later. Don't let me forget that because yeah. um, I've got something else in our news you can use segment today. Uh, we've got a really special video. Uh, again, a testimony of uh, God's powerful uh, just moving in people's lives. And so you're going to want to stick around for that. That'll be about oh, probably a little after the half hour mark. So uh, we got some the word for your day today. Uh, from God's word. And I know you have been, you've, you've got some things that you'll pull out for that here in a little bit. You're like, I do. Of course you do. You always do. Whether you're prepared or not, you're prepared in season and out of season. Well, that's one of the I, things I love about you. Know, you know, I, I always teach on Monday morning and I never know where that's going to come from. The Lord's so faithful. Sometimes it doesn't always translate over well to the live good morning show because it can't just be a quick few minutes. Right. It's, and I don't want to like hijack the whole hour. And so. sometimes you've steeped your Monday mornings in a little bit of a, a path of where God has been taking you. So everybody's kind of along for the ride and knows what you're talking about. And, right. Yeah. It'd be a lot of uh, catching up to do. So. 
Uh, but I will I will uh, reference that in a little while. And also something that happened to me, uh, didn't happen to me, but I was able to take part in, in, in the... Um, in the, the hardware aisle at Lowe's Ooh, I in cannot Shepherdsville. Wait. I cannot yeah, wait for you to that tell was, this That uh, was just on Saturday, so I'll share a little bit about that here in a little while as well. Okay, so check this out. Lynn is on this morning. Good morning, And Lynn. let me just say, Lynn is not feeling well. And so, Lord, right now, I just pray for a holy healing over Lynn's body. I pray that the um, that her heart would simmer down and just be nice and easy. I pray that um, any ill effects from being sick, like the vomiting, would stop in Jesus' name. I pray that she would feel just rest and peace and renewal by your Holy Spirit. Would you just go, would you manifest Holy Spirit, not just in Lynn, but around Lynn where she's laying right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Also, all of you all are saying hello to all of the others of you all. And I love that so much. Otis is saying hi to MK. (laughs) Missy said hi to, I don't know who, Janice, MK. Everybody's like greeting everybody. I love your greetings. Look at this. Janice says, I love D. She loves Pastor D too. And you, and you, and you. And Janice is saying that. (laughs) Hello, I see you, and you, and you. It's like romper room up in here. Good morning, Pastor Bobby Patton from Louisville, Kentucky. So good to see you guys. And, de- and definitely coffee later for Ben. Master Pastor Yoda may have to prolong his morning without coffee, but he's going to have it after the dentist. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Never controversial. Roger Pastor Randall. Pastor Roger, I love yeah. you so much. He says he's believing for some global warming. We kind of need it in certain areas, don't yeah, we? You know. Look at this. Pastor Scott Cooksey Good in the morning, house buddy. from Campbellsville, Kentucky. He's drinking Pete's. Okay, help me. Luminosa, Luminosa yeah. breakfast blend coffee with creme brulee creamer. I love creme wow. brulee, but somebody help me. What does Luminosa mean? What is that? Is it light? Is it like Pete's bringing or, light to your well, breakfast you know, blend? Lum, uh, illuminate, lumen, lumen is light. Hmm. So uh, is it a light breakfast blend? Is that what that means? Maybe. I don't know. Someone will have to help me interpret that. But either way, it sounds delicious. Yeah, that's how they measure light in, in lumens. Right. Uh, okay. Well, so that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And Michelle is telling us it's 50 days until spring. Thank All you right. for that. Countdown that has I can, begun. I might be able to live with that. <laughs> Excuse well, you know, that. when you know it, it doesn't, 50 doesn't sound that far away, you know, so it's like, well, it's going to get here whether we're ready yeah, or not. Yeah, it means so light roast. Come. Scott says it means yeah, light, light roast. roast. Okay, good, there good, you good. Go. Hey, Pastor Scott, we'd love to know how it's going in Campbellsville. If you'd like to give us a little report, we'd really love to hear. Pastor Rick and Pastor Bobby are praying in agreement for Lynn's health. And um, Monica is saying this is her safe place to ask for prayer and it really really is it is and here's pastor judy sally who usually comes to us from high point north carolina but today is coming to us from escondido california wow miss judy traveling the globe because she can and she's kind of a rock star good morning pastor judy how we love and honor you yeah you need you need to come through uh kentucky here soon do a little shake a shake a here Mm -hmm. for me okay holy smokes let Mm -hmm. me tell you something you guys um, as, as, um, let me just, let me just roll on through here. Um, Lynn says, Pastor D, it's wonderful. She loves seeing MK, Robin, Otis, Master Pastor Yoda. Why? Because 50 days till spring, she says, because she gets it. She just <laughs> knows. If you know, you know. Um, right. And Judy's still in bed because she's not drinking anything because she's on what Pacific it's time? Seven forty-eight a.m. There, West Coast time. Mm-hmm. So it's early there. Okay, so um, check this out. Monica says that this is a safe place for prayer. It is a place for prayer where we're going to pray for you and not judge you because it's not our job to judge. It's our job to love and encourage you and stand in the gap with you. Okay, so here it is. Please hold us up as we work through what we're finding out what God wants if we've made a poor choice in our move. And so, Lord, sometimes. In our endeavor to obey you, we feel like the enemy is coming at us with a reproach saying you blew it. And so, Lord, right now, I pray that you would quiet the voice of the enemy in Monica and Donnie's minds, that they would hear your true, perfect and good will. You say we can know your good, perfect will for our lives. And so, Lord, I pray that the noise of the world and the lies of the enemy would be shut out in Jesus name and they could focus on you and your voice. They would be so sensitive to your leading in the season of their life. I pray in agreement with them in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And if you have prayers this morning, it is not an interruption to our show. Did you know it's a very big part of what we do here on the Good Morning Show? So drop us a line, whether you want to say it here in the room 
home, you can still send it by messenger. You can send it through the website, email, whatever you want. But right now, if you have a prayer request, you can type it in your chat box and we'll stop and pray. It's absolutely a huge part of what we do because it's how we love and encourage each other in the body of Christ. And that's what we are. We're a family in Jesus. So everybody's praying in agreement. Thank you, Robin. Master Pastor Yoder, 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 he's saying hey to Lynn and, and praying that she feels better. He's also greeting Scott and he hopes to see Pastor Scott this weekend. When Kentucky gets together for any district event, it's family reunion. We do this about four times a year for different events. Um, this is a big one. This is really a big one. And this rivals district assembly almost. Um, and getting together and seeing all of our friends from ac- across Kentucky is one thing. But this has become such that people outside of Kentucky come. Like like from Danville, Illinois, when the Ramseys come down and people are coming up from all over uh, down south further. And, and we're excited. And it's not too late to come and join us. And right. here, uh, Pastor Corey Jones from Crossroads Tabernacle Church of the Nazarene. It's not too late, D. It's not too late, D. That's right. Um, if you want to, might even be able to hitch a ride. Just grab his suitcase and pour yourself in it. You're tiny; you can fit in his suitcase. Or just carry his bags to the car and climb on in. And tell him, "Hey, I have a, a I have a personal invitation to come as well because you do." That's right. And then we can uh, we can in all a place be together. To stay. Mm-hmm. We can all be together. That's right. Lynn says, thank you so much for the prayers. Oh, she had a birthday yesterday and the Chiefs won on her birthday, but she's not a fan of this finale, though. It's so horrible. Is that what that means? Did I say it wrong? What, finale? Yeah, I think she means she's sick at the end of her birthday and at the end of. Yeah. So we are praying. Also, Chiefs. 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 Just Chiefs. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we have to say any more than that. <laughs> and if you guys are actually rooting for um, the Colts, did the Colts beat the was, 49ers? No, Colts weren't playing. It was Detroit Lions. Oh, Detroit. Did I didn't Detroit see the final be- score, but I, they were way ahead when I looked. You guys, I had a weird day yesterday, um, and I'll, I'll talk about it now. And so I didn't get, I didn't watch all the Chiefs game, and I watched part of it, and I did not catch the game after that at all. I was so physically and mentally exhausted yesterday. I have, like, I could not, Terry, even on the ride home, was like, Melissa, I see it in your eyes. I I don't know what happened, but literally I could not, I had to sleep yesterday. I slept all afternoon. It was probably 3 o'clock, maybe 3.30, maybe 4 o'clock. Is that when I went to bed? I don't know when I went to bed. Yeah, it was right it was, after the yeah. first quarter of the Chiefs game, so whenever that was. I went to bed and I literally slept till like 8.30, got up for like 30 or 40 minutes and then went back to bed. That's how exhausted I was yesterday. And I think it's just from contending. Honestly, I'm just going to be real with you. We're contending. Do you know we are in a battle? It is real. We have a real enemy who wants to kill us, who wants to steal our salvation and our joy, and who wants to crush us, steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy us and those we love, the family of God. And we have to contend and battle against that junk. He is already defeated. And I need to, and you need to remind him that we know that and so we have to contend in prayer we have to contend in intercession we have to contend in love in the fellowship and discipleship we have weapons the lord has given us against the enemy in this battle and it's praise and it's worship and it's rest it's resting and saying i trust you god at the feet of jesus and it's the word and it's intercession come on we have weapons against the enemy in this real battle that we're in But we are not quite, right, where we need to be yet. We're not all the way grown up in Jesus yet. And so we're human and we have some frailties and shortcomings. And one of those is uh, I succumb to some exhaustion occasionally. And yesterday was one of those days. And here's the beautiful thing about that. My, my helpmate, I'm his helpmate. He's my helpmate. My partner saw that this was happening. He could, he could sense it coming. I could sense it coming. And what did he do? He gave me permission and he helped by saying, you, you obviously need to unplug and rest. And so I had the opportunity to do that. Thank you for supporting me in that so that I could just literally sleep and let the Lord renew me. Absolutely. And you all, I am renewed this morning. Mm. I am on fire for Jesus. So let's jump back over to the chat box really quick. There's so many of you in the house this morning. And let me just say, we are honored truly by your presence here. 
we are honored that you would spend some time with us. Give me a little shake a shake. Yeah. And let's say this. Um, B- ben Hill, Master Pastor Yoda is praying not only for all the prayers that we've prayed thus far, but he's praying for Monica. And he says, may the Lord light up the path for you. Keep looking and you will find his path he has for you. That's a good word, Ben. We agree. That's right. MK is praying. Mm-hmm. Lynn says, I wish I could like or heart the comments on YouTube. It's the only downfall. Mm. I want so many to know that I like what they are saying or appreciate their prayers. Thank you, Lynn. We Absolutely. love you. We know you like and love everything. Thank you so much. Um, so Otis says this is the first time he gets to mix at district level. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And so welcome Randy uh, this morning from Canada. Morning, Randy. Our sweet brother. We love you. We say good morning unto you. Taylor is giving me my up-to-date. This is my kid that keeps me in the know. Um, And thank you for telling me it's the 49ers. So the Chiefs and the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. Thanks, sis. I appreciate your help. It's a rematch from uh, Super Bowl, uh, let's see, what was it, uh, 54, four years earlier between the Chiefs and the 49ers. But Joe Montana is not on either team. (laughs) And he was, but he's not now. (laughs) Not four years ago. Pastor Rick says Thursday he's having a routine procedure for old dudes. Okay. Okay, that no. means it's time for prayer. Lord, thank you for Pastor Rick. Thank you for his body that you made uniquely and perfectly according to your heart. And I pray right now that you would just bring whole healing and that everything would go perfectly with this procedure and that we would see an incredible healing and strength come to Pastor Rick, that you would re-energize him. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that in these days that you would bring him to a place where he has more energy than he's ever remembered by your Holy Spirit. I pray this believing in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Randy's drinking hot chocolate up yes. there in Canada. Sounds delicious every time you say it. And mm. Pastor Scott's giving us a little update. He says he's looking forward to seeing so many folks this week. And they're supposed to have seven coming from Campbellsville. So Woo-hoo! good. That's so good, Pastor Scott. I love it. When we don't just come, but we grab everybody we can from our congregations and say, come on with us, y'all. Alex Alex, in the house. Alex, my coffee maker barista. He says 49ers came back and won the game against the Lions. Okay. Okay. They yeah, yeah, Lynn says so too. They made a tremendous comeback. Thanks for the update, guys. I totally missed it. I didn't miss it. I didn't watch it, but I truly did not miss it because I was sleeping and let me tell you, that was real nice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um and and so Scott was really rooting for the Lions. Well, yeah. you know, I would heard some statistics. Of course, you don't know how much you can trust the statistics that are pregame stuff. You know, I mean, obviously, Travis Kelsey had a great day yesterday with I don't know exactly how many total receptions he had, but he broke Jerry Rice from San Francisco 49ers uh, history, his all time record of postseason receptions. And uh, what I'd heard on the radio on one Cincinnati radio station pre- pregame said that, oh, they were expecting him to get less than six receptions. Carries, carries at all. Uh, receptions. Um, is what they were talking about because they were talking about the record. And I was kind of like, oh, wow, is the defense going to be that good, you know, mm-hmm. from the Ravens? And they said that they were really, you know, talking about that. They were raving about the Ravens. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, OK. And then when he made like four in the first, you know, the first attempt at, at you know, going down the field, I thought, well, OK, this is going to be a, a hey, record. Let me record tell you guys so. something. We are not a sports podcast. We are not a talk show like that. But we talk about everything because we get to because that's what we do on the Good Morning Show. Um, <laughs> Um, but I do want to say it was a little bit difficult for us because we do have um, a favorite on the Ravens team. We we really love sure. Lamar. Lamar Jackson is someone that we have um, taken an interest in because he's from University of Louisville. And we were there. Our church so beautifully gave an, gave us for Pastor Appreciation one year. Wonderful tickets Great to seats. the home Louisville game where they inducted and retired his jersey and number along with Johnny Unitas in the in the it's a big deal. Um, and so we have a love for Lamar, but we are from the Kansas City area originally, and it's very difficult for us to do anything but root for our Kansas City teams. Yeah. And so it's it was a bit difficult. I was like, I don't, I want him to play well. I just don't want him to play well enough to beat the Chiefs. Well, and you, <laughs> and you know, current events, it's kind of crazy because um, if you're not a sports fan, they they even referred to. Uh, you know, they didn't want to disappoint the Swifty fans, but that, you know, they were saying Kansas City Did might not make it that? through that. Let me do it again. The, right. Well, well, look, I just pulled up the, the news about the Super Bowl, and here's one of the in the news headlines. Can Taylor Swift make it to the Super Bowl Who after her Tokyo cares? concert? Who cares? 
yours? I don't know. Apparently, it's news. Apparently, every young girl <laughs> across America. Oh, uh, you know. Oh, we better not talk about this. I'll get in trouble. Well, and and that of course is because of her relationship with uh, Travis, Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, I get it. Of the Chiefs, I get it. You know, I get so it. it's you know. All right, we better move on past this. Yeah. Pastor Rick said you poured yourself out yesterday, and that drained you. It is. It, I do agree with that completely. It was probably the <clears throat> the icing on the cake, and it's been so beautiful, but. I think it's a daily contending. Um, And Judy says this. Pastor Judy says, you are contending and the end result is revival for our area. Um, She believes Mm -hmm. this intensely. I'm going to agree with your word, Judy. We want to see a city one. We want to see all of Louisville for the kingdom of God. Please don't tell me that's impossible. Please don't shake your head and be like, you're nuts. Because I believe I serve the God of the impossible and nothing is impossible for those who believe. And I know we serve a God who wants to see whole cities, whole regions. Regions, whole nations, come on, come to him. He is drawing, will we answer? And so that's my heart. And and there is contending in that. And we're contending in a new level um, in this merge. And so it has been beautiful. It's been transforming. It has been incredibly victorious. It's also been the hardest thing we've ever done. And so contending is both glorious and hard. Yeah, But usually things that are worth it are hard. And so we just break in and keep pressing on. Look this. Good morning. from He's in Kansas City, Warren is. Warren's in Kansas City, and he's heading to Raleigh, North Carolina in his good morning, truck. Buddy. Good morning, Safe Travels, Warren. We love you. That's right. Good morning, Martina Burchett from Southern Kentucky. We love you at Albany this morning. Janice says she actually likes both teams going to the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah. And Warren says he's drinking gas station coffee, which sometimes is horrible and sometimes it's amazing. <laughs> it just depends on where you're at. That's right. That's and Ben right. says he was pulling for the Ravens and the Lions, so you're welcome. Ben, Mm -hmm. Ben and I are never usually on the same side of that. Although he did root for the Chiefs a couple years ago. I think we lost, lost, but that's okay. Okay, so um, what else are we talking about today? Uh, Just still football. (laughs) Roger, just just throwing more out there. All the haters eating crow taste like Raven. (laughs) (sighs) Pastor Roger, love you. Love you. Hey, this might be a good idea at the top of the hour. Do me a little shake a shake here this morning. See where we're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, It might be a good idea if it's all right with you all to um, talk about some of the things that you have on the schedule this morning, Mr. Producer. Yes. Well, I think we're um, we're going to do some uh, the word for your day here in just about one minute. Okay. And um, we actually have an opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about sharing our faith and what that looks like, you know, especially if we're in a place where uh, you're out in the marketplace or you're uh, at the, you know, at the store or wherever you're at. And uh, so it's always a challenging time whenever we're out there and need to, uh, you know, just share our story with people. We get freaked out. So we'll talk about that a little bit after you share the word for your day. Yeah. Um, and uh, why don't you catch up on the other things here with everybody else real quick? I and, think it's uh, mostly just a little bit of football talk. Chiefs may need to move to f- the Philippines and rename themselves the Manila Folders <laughs> after the Super Bowl. Otis, you're, you're hilarious. The Chiefs will never leave KC. Let me just prophesy that. I hope. Um, Lynn says, Dear Tony Romo, say Taylor Swift one more time. Does Tony Romo just not like the Chiefs or what? Every time he's the announcer, I'm like, oh, Tony Romo, why do you want me to dislike you? Why? I ask that question again. Um, It used to be Joe Buck. Now it's Tony yeah, Romo. Right, right. Yeah. But I don't want to be disparaging. Yeah. Come on, this is the place on the Good Morning Show. And by the way, welcome to the Good Morning Show with Terry and Melissa. We are so glad you're here on this Monday morning for Monday Morning Motivation. It has been a whirlwind of a first half hour here as we have just jumped on with so many of you and we've been encouraged already by you. We love praying with you and for you. I don't want to speak disparaging on people. So let me just yeah. uh, repent right now for being unkind for a minute about Tony Romo. Sorry, Lord. Yeah. Sorry, Tony. Well, and, and Lynn brings up a good point, and this is even biblical. She said the Ravens just played dirty football yesterday. They were getting overly aggressive with things. It says, however, they got the results of such. Uh-huh. You know, and that's the way our Boy, sin will find us lesson, out. that's a life lesson, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Things hey, good morning, Pastor us. Angie. Good morning. Uh, we love you. It was an incredible day in the Lord yesterday. You had a great testimony, which really encouraged me. I've been living off that word of your testimony. I 
want you to know that. Um, so thank you for sharing that. It really spoke to my heart. It really ministered to my heart. Alex says, I love that I'm able to serve my church by making coffee for everyone. He missed us yesterday, but he was with us in a spirit of praise, tuned, turned his music up and sang while he was at work. Alex in a very busy time at work. And so he was able to join us. But let me tell you, Alex doesn't just serve by making coffee. Alex is um, learning all the ins and outs of our new lyric and um, production system back there. And he's learning to be a part of that again. We love you, Alex. You not only serve in your work capacities, but your very presence and your support and prayer is a great service, not only to the church, but to your pastors. So thank you, Alex. We love you deeply. Yes. We honor you. Okay, so what does this mean? Janice says she finally got approvals and dates for outpatient. She starts on the 5th. She's so excited to pray for a smooth transition. Janice, you'll have to translate a little bit for me, but that sounds exciting, and I want to praise the Lord in that. Is this part of your um, healing and your recovery? I want to know. Mm, mm, Mm. That's good. Mm, mm, mm. And look, Lynn's already praising the Lord for Janice too. Okay, so here we go. The word for your day. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Today is Proverbs 29. Why? Because today is January the 29th. Can you believe that we're already almost through the first month of the year? That's right. It's the end of the month. It's the 29th of January. And so today I went to Proverbs, which correlates with the day of the month, which is January 29th. So we're reading Proverbs 29. You know, in this reading this morning, there's one that captured my attention. This is a place I've been living from Um this is exciting okay this is a place i've been living from since a verse that i've been living from um since 2020 since may of 2020 when the lord brought a vision unto me that i'm living out of and it's important as one who carries this vision to remember why I'm carrying this vision to remember what the Lord said to me, um, to be confident in his voice when he called us to this vision. And here's the verse that goes along with that. And in Proverbs 29, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. Now, let me read it from another translation, if I might. I'm going to pull it up here. This is Proverbs. Give me a minute. Nobody, nobody judge me. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. And this is what it says in the NIV. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Have you heard this? Without vision, my people perish. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. Listen, we have to have a vision. We have to have a vision from the Lord and we have to have this vision, not singularly, but corporately. And we have to not forsake the vision, but together agree. This is the vision of the Lord. Otherwise the people perish without vision, without a goal, without what the Lord would have us work toward. We are dead. We are lost. We are unrestrained. The word says without restraint. The word says, what does that mean? We're all over the place. Without a common vision, we're all going to try to do all the things that we think we should do because they seem right or they seem ministry e. And they seem like, hey, this seems like a good thing. Seems like God might be in this. What? Well, let's do this. And we can give ourselves to 50 different things. And not a one of them is the Lord's vision. What we have to do is be a people that gets so dead to ourselves, that puts our flesh to death, that puts self to death, that absolutely comes to a place where it's not our agenda. It's not what we want. We're going to sit before you, Lord, until you give us the vision of your heart. Once we hear you, we're going to go all out with all tenacity to obey the vision that you've placed on us and we're going to get everybody to come along and agree with us not because it's our vision but because it's your vision but once you give it to us then it becomes our corporate vision that we work toward we must be a people with a singular focus on Christ but get this the vision that he has for one group or one church of the family may look different for another body of believers. It's always toward the same goal. It's always for the same kingdom. It always matches up with the written word of God and the intention and the heart and the nature of the father. It always has to match up. Otherwise it's not his vision. Okay. And it always has to work toward the goal of kingdom expansion and kingdom growth. 
And so it might look different in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It might look different in Kansas City. It might look different in Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston. It looks different in Louisville, Kentucky. But here's the purpose. Once we have this vision, come on, we as leaders, we as pastors, we as those who carry the vision have to share it, not because we want everybody to follow us, but because it's the vision of the Lord for our region, for our people, for our location of the family to follow along and buy into. Because if if it's just us carrying the vision, it has little weight. But if it's us carrying the vision and sharing it in love with others who then say, hey, I see the vision. I catch on to this vision. I'm all into this vision. So what does it look like for us? Let me give you a real time life example in 2020 May, May 9th, when the Lord came to me and he said, this is what he said. Like he didn't physically come into my room, but like he spoke to me so clearly and he downloaded this in my knower, my heart, my knower, my mind. Every part of me knew this. I wanted to intercede um, for Kansas City. I wanted to intercede for the place that that we love where we're we're from. um, I'm from, my hometown is just an hour outside of Kansas City in Topeka, Kansas. And so I love that area and I wanted to intercede. And the Lord said, I'm not calling you to pray and intercede for Kansas City. There are intercessors for Kansas City. I'm calling you to love and pray and intercede for Louisville, Kentucky. In fact, I'm calling you to raise up a prayer room called River City prayer room, RCPR, you know, CPR, pulmonary, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, bringing resuscitating life to Louisville, Kentucky, and that by prayer and intercession, you win the city and the region of Louisville, Kentucky. That's the vision. He gave us the how. He gave us the details. He even gave us the name of the prayer room. And why did he do that? Because he wants to see his kingdom come in Louisville as it is in heaven. He doesn't want us to forget that what we're doing can never be so internally focused on the family of God that we don't turn outward and begin to see the lost and begin to see the need in our community. We're not called to meet every need because many of these needs, many of the problems in every one of our communities is actually the the subsequent result of sin. And we can't fix sin. Only Jesus can. But the call is for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus to reach our community and then the next community and then bleed over to where the next church is reaching their community. And then with agreement, with unity and cooperation with other churches and with other prayer rooms, come on, it bleeds over to take the whole city, the whole region for the kingdom of God. That's the vision the Lord gave to me. Am I the only one that has that vision? No, I'm sure not. Am I the only one that carries that vision? No way. We have a whole people of believers now, a whole group, a whole family that are like, we are all in. We are saying yes to partnering with the Lord Jesus Christ to see our city and our region come to the kingdom of God. But wait, there's more. This verse isn't just for me. And it's not just about this vision. It's for you. It's for all who read this and realize, guess what? You are called as well. You have a community. You have a family. You have a neighborhood. You have a city. Come on. He wants to win that area where you're at through you for his kingdom. It's the truth. It's not just for one of us. It's for all of us. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But come on, where there is vision... There's life, there's renewal, there's revival, as Pastor Judy said. And we need revival that lingers, that lasts, that tarries, a perpetual revival that comes and never leaves. And we see the Lord God changing systemic problems like addiction and homelessness and and tolerance to sin that is intolerable. Come on, we see the Lord do a thing. Why? Because we pray and we intercede, not because we're out there trying to convince people. We're not trying to talk people into things. We're trying to pray that the Lord would have his way. Pray that the hearts would be softened and ready to receive him. Pray and then listen and then pray some more according to what his heart's desire are. That's an intercession. We're not praying our desire. We're praying his, right? We're praying his words back to him. And then he moves. How does it work? Come on. Sometimes we don't know, but we know it does. We see it happening. We see changes. We see transformations. We believe it. Is it going to take a year or two? No. Is it going to take 10 or 12? Probably not. What is it going to take? It's probably going to take our lives. 
but I can't tell you how willing I am to give my life for the vision of God because nothing is worth giving your life for like whatever the Lord says. Nothing is worth living and dying for but Jesus Christ, his plan and his purposes. And I'm all in and it's not just me. There's a whole bunch of us that have said, yes, Lord, to your will, to your way, and to your vision. What is the vision God is putting on your heart? As you read this today, don't be a people where no vision exists. Don't be a people unrestrained. Don't be a perishing people. Sit before the Lord and say, Lord, I need a vision. Monica prayed for that this morning, and she asked for prayer this morning that we would agree with her, that they would know the will of God for their life and walk in the center of it. Come on, there's no better place to be than the center of God's will for your life. We want that vision for you. We want that calling for you, and we want you to know it. And so, Lord, right now, I pray that you would pour out your spirit to such a degree that you would speak and we would hear you, Lord, that we would block out the noise of the world, that we would absolutely shun any sort of distraction the enemy would throw us, and that we would get into a place where we are so listening to whatever it is you would say, Lord, we need a vision. We need a vision. We do not want to be a people without restraint. We do not want to be a people perishing. We need your vision. And Lord, then we need your tenacity and your courage and your boldness to go after that with perseverance. Will it be a short vision? Probably not. Will it take our lives? Probably so. May we be so willing to give our lives for the vision that you place upon us. Lord, we are willing. Will you speak? And will you help us hear? I pray this for every person right now that's listening in the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. There's your word for the day. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, you use the word uh, where where there is no vision, uh, that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Otis has a really good comment here. He says he used to tell army leaders that spoke of vision, that vision without funding is hallucination. In Christ, he says, I would say funding is our belief, prayer, and reading the good book, reading God's word. You know, um, the provision or Mm -hmm. the funding of God will always follow the vision when we're obedient. So you're right, Otis, you're right. When we get the vision, we have to take the step of obedience. And when we begin to obey, come on, he's always going to throw provision and funding, whatever it looks like. And also, we do need that constant support of the word. We need that constant support of the spirit. We can never actually disconnect from all of the things of Christ while we're walking this out. Because it's not our vision. We can walk out without him. It's his vision through us. We can only accomplish through him. I have heard it said uh, that uh, that is your top one. Okay, thank you. I've heard it said that uh, where he gives the vision, he is the provision. Amen. You know, he'll provide for wherever he, God provides where God guides. Yeah. You see, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, Anthony uh, William, uh, Anthony Lichter always says things like on a T-shirt and different things, you know, sayings, but they're easy to remember. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know. So check this out this morning. Everybody's greeting everybody. I love the greetings, you all. Um, Michelle says uh, she believes this is the year of miracles, according to many Christians. And that stated, we have them every day just by drawing breath. It's our commitment and devotion, which allow us to draw deeper. I would say the same. Every year is the potential year of miracles for those who believe and press in and desire to see the Lord move. You know, he never lets us down when we anticipate meeting with him. He always meets that anticipation and then exceeds it. Right. It's his heart to meet and encounter his people. And where that happens authentically, then signs and wonders, they follow. Miracles follow that. Yeah. And so glory to God. It's good. Um, And also, let's see, um, Janice is giving us an explanation of what she told us earlier. She's moving from home health to outpatient. They have better resources for rehab. She had to do home health because of bathing, but the outpatient doesn't offer that. Praise the Lord. She can bathe by herself. Lord, thank you for your healing of Janice. She is a testimony, a walking talking testimony of your faithful miracle working power. Thank you for continuing the work you've started in Janice and to completion. We pray in Jesus name. That's good. Amen. Amen. Hey, our sweet sister Mindy is on the line today and she says her son could hear chants inside his condo in KC and said it was wild last night. I bet it was. Yeah. Um, and so we welcome you, Mindy, sweet sister to the good morning show and go chiefs.
And MK's praising the Lord for Janice's testimony. Mindy says she's looking forward to seeing everyone this week at Bluegrass Awakening down in Bowling Green. And praise the Lord that we're going to see you and hug you. I miss you. Pastor Judy says it's the Lord's tactics for each situation to be different. Look for the battle plan for Jericho versus I. That's right. Your plan is going to be different than my plan, but it's his vision in you. It's his vision. You receive it. Come on, you receive it and then you walk it out. And there's a lot to do with that. It's quick, obviously, this little devotional this morning that I'm sharing with you. But there's days and years worth of stuff to learn about this. But this is where we start. We have to have have a vision and we can't be a people aimlessly wandering about without restraint yeah yeah um lynn says she's heard my cousin jay say revival that wanes is emotional we need fire that sanctifies amen this is a revival that purifies that continues to transform it can't be a flash in the pan emotion of five days uh, we had a revival service and it was real good it's got to be a revival that comes and tarries and it really won't start until we pray into that and then decide to live out of that so when we pray lord bring revival let it start with me it means me gets dead self gets gone and we let the holy spirit come and have his way in us Absolutely. Pastor Rick says, amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Judy and Lynn are amening each other. And so is Pastor Scott. Lord be with Lynn. I pray right now in Jesus name. By the way, Michelle says, since at least three of those gathered here are native Kansans, happy Kansas day. Happy Kansas day to you all Kansans. (laughs) That's right. And looky here, my sweet sister, Pastor D says word. That means, yep. That means amen. Agreed. I love it. I love you, D. Um, okay, so m- rolling down here, I don't want to skip people. How does... Uh, yeah. So Robin has an incredible testimony. You know, the Lord's been calling her and giving vision in her. And the proof is that she's going this week to Bible school orientation down to Asbury. And that is her being obedient to the call and the vision the Lord has on her life in this season. And can I say amen, amen, amen to you. I'm so excited that you and Otis are going down in radical obedience to what God has for you. Bless you guys. That's good. Yeah. And uh, Judy reminds us in Luke 18, the Lord asks, will I find this kind of faith when I come back? Speaking of tenacious faith that will not quit. And the answer is yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, he will. Okay. So look at this. D is rejoicing in Janice for this great testimony. Yeah. I'm so excited what the Lord is doing in her life. Janice, you are such a uh, encouragement to us. All right, Betty, you better talk. I have blabbed on and on and on. Well, that's okay. Um, It's all good because there's lots of good stuff that's happening here. Um, That is one of the things, as you're just joining into the Good Morning Show, welcome. This is Monday Morning Motivation uh, with Terry and Melissa. And we are uh, talking today about all kinds of stuff. But a lot of the things we've been talking about is how God is moving in the midst of all of the things that are going on around the world, regardless of whether or not you're a, a sports fan or just whatever it might be that you've got going on. Um, what were you going to say? I was going to say there's a ton of information out there and the news can get you down in about two minutes. You don't even have to watch it very long before you're really succumbing to the negativity of the world today. Can I just encourage you to um, tune out to not watch? You can get your news from quality good sources that's going to bring encouragement to you. And this is one of those places once a week where we're going to try to bring you some news you can actually use. Take it away, Pastor Terry. All right. Our news you can use segment today. Unfortunately, according to recent surveys and polls, we are all aware of this, uh, the amount of people who do not believe in the existence of God is growing. And for whatever reason, these people are convinced that God is not real, that he doesn't exist. I mean, there have been topics in movies and all kinds of things written about it, but God does exist. Amen. We're here to tell you that we know for sure, and we know that everybody else on here can give witness to that. For sure. It's most, he is most certainly real and desires a close, personal relationship with everybody. Amen. So our News You Can Use segment today features a Christian singer, Olivia Lane, who shares her testimony of the moment she went from being an atheist to being a Christ follower. And she had convinced herself that the God of the universe who had created and formed her was not real, but that is no longer the case. Check this out. I basically just woke up every morning and I was like, God, if you're real, you'll reveal yourself to me. You're going to do something big. It's going to be amazing. Um, Of course, I wasn't ready. But as those four months went on, my heart began to soften. And I began to say, you know what? 
Like, if this truly is real, God, I'm so desperate for you to just come in and blow up my life because I, I, I need it. Um, and I got my answer on April 29th, 2018. I was sitting in my living room and I was reading this beautiful book that my therapist had recommended me called Walking with God by John Eldridge. Mm. And it was just the be most beautiful display of what a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord looked like. I had never been presented that gospel before. And this was finally sinking in for me that this is a life that I want. I, I want to find that kind of purpose for my life. I want to have that kind of relationship in my life. And um, I remember reading a sentence in the book, we are at a world at war. And then all of a sudden, uh, like tears were dropping onto the page. I was happy. I mean, I was like, why am I crying? This is so bizarre. And then it kind of felt like all of my emotions were being felt at once. And then I sensed a presence in the room, so I looked up, and the way that my living room was situated was I was on my couch, and then I had a really big window right here. And so I looked up into the window, into this beautiful blue sky day, and I saw a shadow silhouette of Jesus with his arms outstretched. How about that? Wow. You know, when you ask God to show up and he does, what's that like? So I, I have to admit something to you. I don't know Olivia Lane. Um, she's not someone I'm familiar with, but she's beautiful. Yeah, I, I believe the kids do. They, I'm uh, certain. Are up I'm certain of it. Also, she's incredibly articulate about this call from you know atheism or agnosticism or whatever it is to the call of not only being aware of Christ but knowing really intimate knowledge of Christ. Well, she said she'd never been introduced to that type of the gospel, that version of the gospel of God wanting to have a relationship with you. Because so many people, when they're sharing or evangelizing, um, and you've had experience, we've all had experience with this, but uh, I, I say the Seattle Mariners game, when the guy was out there with the sign and he's preaching hate and spewing forth all the, you know, uh, hellfire, brimstone and damnation and all of that without the encouraging message that God is love and he loves you and he wants to spend eternity with you. He does not, as a lot of people think, they think God wants to send them to hell for being bad, but he doesn't. Yeah, we he's, do. He's not a heavy-handed father that's ready to discipline you and beat you. He is a loving father who's drawing you unto himself with the complete invitation to intimate relationship. And that's what's difficult for people to understand. We haven't talked about it enough. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that was the interesting thing. I mentioned early on in the show that I was in Lowe's this last Saturday getting supplies for our work day at the yeah. church. And uh, as I was going down the aisle looking for um, some staples, um, I heard, I overheard one of the employees there talking to an elderly man about uh, his cancer. And he says, well, I believe that God wants to heal that cancer in you. And he's like, do you believe that? And I turned around as I walked past and I said, amen. And then I realized that I had just interjected myself into the conversation and I couldn't keep walking. I, I, I started to, I was like, nope, I got to turn around. So let me back. just recap. This is an employee at Lowe's. Yeah. Yeah. Ministering, ministering to a customer at Lowe's who's just confessed to him that he's, he's struggling with cancer. Yeah. And so he declares the Lord, I believe the Lord can heal you of this cancer. And you walk by and say, amen. And now you're stopped in the conversation. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right. So, so Doug, uh, the employee there starts talking to uh, this man named Wes about his belief and he says well uh, he says first of all he didn't ask this is what i love about doug you say tenacious right doug is so tenacious uh, that he he said um he says i believe god can heal what you have going on in your body and he's and then he says I, he started to say do you believe in jesus but he didn't say that he said what's your relationship like with the lord he says do you have a relationship uh, of, of him with him and he said marginally and wes was very i mean i thought you know what he's he honest was honest he said marginally yeah. Yeah. in other words uh this is an 80 year old man who you know over the course of time probably went to church over the years and had you know been exposed to the bible and to you know those things but we never know who when we're talking to somebody where they're at 
in the timeline of their life of what yeah. God has for them. Yeah, good point. So never assume that everybody is a believer. Never assume that, oh, they're maybe they're just, they've wandered away right. and now they need to get back to him. But I think that it's one of those situations where when we're talking with people, sometimes we get, when we, that word, that scary word evangelism, right? you know, sharing your story, sharing your testimony, we freeze up because we think that, oh no, it's going to enter into a debate. Mm-hmm. But Doug didn't go into that with a debate. He didn't, he didn't ask the guy's opinion. He just said, here's what I know and here's what I believe. And I want to talk to you about this. And he said, um, I want to pray for you about your healing, but it's not going to do any good if first and foremost, you're not right with Jesus. So he said, we're going to pray that and you're, first. And you're not talking about a theological we were, it was this, not a is, theological this is what debate. happened at Lowe's <clears throat> right. that you witnessed and were a part of. Yeah, because so you of, didn't say this. Doug, the employee, right. said this to Wes, the customer. He's and a lot because a lot of people in a public setting, especially, are intimidated by the idea that if I'm talking to someone about Jesus, oh, it's going to open up for a debate and they're going to ask me questions that I don't understand. Right. And that's not what it's about. Right. It's not about that. Right. See, people can debate scripture, but they cannot debate your life that has been changed and your belief in what God has done in your own life. Amen. So he uh, basically, Doug, just he shared a short little bit about his story, but he went into Wes and said, we're going to pray now. And he says, "Um, we're going to ask for forgiveness. And then he explained what that meant and then just led Wes to the Lord right there in the aisle at Lowe's. And it was it was beautiful. I got to talk with him for with Wes for a little while after that in the parking lot. And um, it's just it's just amazing. So praise the Lord that a man came to Christ because another man in Lowe's felt impressed by the Holy yeah. Spirit to be faithful in that re- in that yeah. call and that request. Now, not only did you get involved because you were there in the aisle, but a couple an aisle over heard well, what they were, was happening. They were, just, they were not an aisle over. They were standing in the same aisle oh, okay. right behind us. And they came at the end and interjected because the man of the couple had been healed from cancer. Mm-hmm. And so they agreed in the power of prayer and amen over Wes's life. Now, that that is five people getting involved in a, a, a prayer meeting in the middle of Lowe's yeah. because of the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's marketplace ministry and praise the Lord for it. Yeah. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. It, it very, very much was. So and by the way, did you think that it was important to note that neither Doug nor Wes nor that other couple, none of them were vocational ministers. They weren't pastors. They weren't preachers. Come on, you guys. They were just believers yeah. getting involved. The yeah. only pastor there was Pastor Terry, and he didn't even start the whole thing. He just walked <laughs> by in the middle of it and got involved. Yeah, you I mean, guys, I'm telling yeah. you, this is for all believers. Marketplace Ministries for everybody. It sure is. It sure hey, is. Hey, look, at, we've got friends that have just joined us mm-hmm. this morning, and so I want to say good morning, Destiny. Love you so good. much much Morning. sweet sister this is a ball of energy for jesus and kara hi kara hey, she kara. says uh she's down in glasgow kentucky and she says there's a lot of christian movies out right now there are praise mm-hmm. the lord yep. pastor ruth morgan's in the there house we go and it's good to see you pastor ruth she's got a 23 year old granddaughter jessica who's just been diagnosed with cancer and they're waiting to hear her care plan i pray you don't need a care plan because i pray right now in the name of jesus that cancer would leave the body of jessica in jesus name I pray that every cancer cell would be eradicated and there would be no reason why except for the goodness and the mighty touch of God. I pray right now you'd be glorified in Jessica's body. You'd be glorified in Jessica's life, Lord Jesus. And I pray that all pain, disease, and affliction would leave this child in Jesus' name. Amen. The care plan here is that he cares. Amen. He cares for her. Amen. That's good, Terry. Mm -hmm. Gabe says, Becky says, that people have a situation ship instead of a relationship <laughs> that Gabe can articulate things in a very oh, understandable man. way. Yeah. And that is true. Yeah. We have far yeah. too many people in a religious situation ship instead of a religious relation or a re- right relationship. Yeah, I sure. agree, Becky pastor Scott's praying in agreement with pastor, um, Ruth, Ruth mm-hmm. and, uh, Hey, Steve Hill. Hey. Steve Hill from Henderson. Henderson. Good morning, Steve. Henderson, Kentucky. We love you. Good morning, buddy. And we say good morning to you. Pastor Judy says, and that is revival. That is revival in Lowe's. 
Come on. That's Come right. on, Kentucky. I mean, there's got to be a – Pastor Scott Cooksey, I bet you'll run with this. There's there's uh, something to be said about the uh, building supplies that uh, are used to, to build a house versus uh, a person, right? What God can do when he comes in and renovates. Um, Ruth says it's God organizing an intervention. Come on, yeah? God. Come on. Mm-hmm. We love you, Jesus. Yeah. We love your leading, even if it's unconventional, even if it's scary. Come on, when the Lord comes and starts leading us in a way we didn't expect, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Amen. Let's give in to that and not freak out and stop it because we're uncomfortable. Let's give in to that mm-hmm. and let him have his way, whether it's in Lowe's, whether it's in McDonald's, whether it's in Kroger, whether it's in church. Come on, have your way, Jesus. That's right. That's right. Well, we're currently coming to you once a week on Monday mornings through Facebook, YouTube, also the homepage of our website, thegoodmorningshow.tv, which you can also find all of our previous episodes there. You can watch um, the videos from the shows. You can listen to the podcast there, or you can listen wherever you get your podcasts if you're a podcast listener. And, you know, podcast basically just allows you to be able to take it and go with you wherever you're going and take us with you. So Amen. we appreciate our podcast listeners, uh, our subscribers, yeah, and um, also those who are listening um, after we have done the live broadcast. Yeah, you know, if it's not live anymore and you're coming to this, this word is alive and it's for you. It's for you today. Yes. Hey, I want to just testify to something. Ruth is dealing with a granddaughter, a young granddaughter who has been diagnosed with cancer. But there's somebody on here who the Lord has healed radically. And that's mm-hmm. destiny. Mm-hmm. And destiny's saying right now, oh, my heart, Lord Jesus, I pray that just as you healed me, heal Jessica in Jesus' name. Amen. There is power in precedence. Mm -hmm. And the Lord set a precedence with destiny that he has healed a young woman, a young girl once from cancer. He can do it and will do it again. We're believing for Jessica's healing. Thank you, destiny, for that powerful prayer and the powerful testimony of a healed body from cancer. Amen. Hey, check this out. People still joining in this morning. We've done run out of time. You all, we're done over. We are in Holy Spirit time now and so dawn is in the house from the panhandle of oklahoma we love you dawn we love your ministry dawn we love your heart for prayer and intercession you are a worshiper we love you sweet sister amen i'll answer this one here kara you say that you guess that because i said there are more people going away from christ if that's why there are so many more christian movies out i do believe that i believe that we're using every bit of media that we have to get the attention of the people who are looking for entertainment to actually let's change the word entertain a relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord and and get back to the basics because you know unfortunately there are so many more bad things going on in this world just as the Lord said there would be mm-hmm. it's no surprise to him and so we're praising God that he gives creative people ideas and ways to reach more people for the sake of the gospel but in the darkest of times the light of Christ shines even brighter and the light of Christ is in you if you know him And you are a believer, you are a son, you are a daughter of the living God. The light of Christ shines through you in the darkest of nights, in the darkest of places. Do not hide your light. Don't be ashamed. Shine bright for Jesus. Go on out there and make the darkness flee in the presence of the light of Christ. That is your call today. And if you aren't sure, hear me today, if you aren't sure that you carry the light of Christ because you're not sure you're in right relationship with Jesus, today is the day of salvation. And I want to pray right now that you would receive him. You need a savior. You do. You can't save yourself. Nothing in the world can save you. You need a savior. And there's only one. There's only one way to heaven. There's not many doors, y'all. I don't care what you hear. I don't care what you say. This is the truth of God's word. The only way to heaven, the only way to the Father is through the Son, Christ Jesus. You need a Savior and He's it. That's right. That's right. You choose Him today. He's already chosen you. Will you accept and receive the free gift of salvation that He offers to you that you might be a son, that you might be a daughter of the living King today, and that the light of Christ would shine through you in a dark world? That is the call. And for those who are already believers, what Pastor Scott Cooksey is saying here is, he says, the experience uh, happens to him often, what happened to me in Lowe's. And he said, God's raising up a mighty family of believers, testifying to his power and his presence, revealing that relationship to the helpless and hopeless is happening everywhere. Amen, Pastor Let Scott. Let that be the, the whole thing that happens this week. Hey, Pastor Brandon in the house. Hey, Man, buddy. you guys, I want to sign off. I want to close this thing out. We just, cannot, we just cannot do it, Why man. 
man. We cannot out. do it. We're an OT. Wow. We've been in overtime for eight minutes, but here we are now still in overtime. It's Holy Spirit time. Why? Because you all keep jumping on and joining us and we just can't go, but we're going to hear shortly. I honor you, Pastor Brandon. I hope you and Becca and all the kids are doing well. We miss you like crazy here in Kentucky. I hope the Lord is using you mightily. No doubt he is. Um, and o time is where OT is where it gets exciting, says Don. <laughs> That's right. Whether it's football or the Good Morning Show, I think after o- well, OT or any other place. The fire of God is falling in this place and on this live stream, and I hope you feel it too. I hope you know he's so present, not only where we're sitting, but where you are. He is not bound by time and space. He goes where our feet cannot. Yeah. And so, Holy Spirit, I thank you for being so real in the lives of each listener right now. I thank you for drawing us to places we need to go, for areas we need to correct, for places we need to be remembering and changing, and also thanking you for the work you've already done in our life. We don't want to miss an opportunity to be grateful for what you're already doing and have done. So we just testify to your goodness, God. That's right. That's right. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. What do you think? I don't know. I must have got a lot of sleep yesterday. You must have got a lot of sleep. Well, uh, we just want to encourage you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you, we love you. Wherever you're at, be sure to just just be aware of what God wants to do in a place. Mm-hmm. I love how the advice we've gotten and heard over the years and we've adopted ourselves that when you get ready to go into Walmart or Kroger or wherever you're going, just say, God, who who can you lead me to today? Who is it that's going to be in this place that, that really needs to know you in a special way? Yeah. And then just be open to him leading you in that direction. Yeah. Because that's what's important. I pray for a spirit of boldness and courage for each one of us today as we do engage in marketplace ministry. It's not just for uh, uh, those vocational ministers. It's for each and every believer called to share their faith, to share a testimony. Maybe you don't get to share the gospel story, but maybe you get to pray with somebody. Can you today be bold in the Lord? I pray for courage in Jesus' name for each one of us. And I want you to know as we sign off today how very much Jesus Christ loves you, that while you were his enemy, While you were away from him, he gave his life for you. That is the kind of love, the unconditional proof of love that we all need to know and hear. Thank you, Jesus. And because he loves you and because he loves me, we love you. You're not alone. We love you. That's right. You matter to God. You matter to us. We look forward to seeing you again soon. If you haven't already subscribed on our website, go to the goodmorningshow.tv. Sign up for notifications in your email. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get the notifications that way when we go live. In case we do something unexpected, we love you guys. And uh, have a great week. All yeah, right? Yeah. Lord bless you. We'll bless see you guys. so many of you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the Good Morning Show with Terry and Melissa. You can catch up on previous Drop us a line at our website, thegoodmorningshow.tv. Thanks for listening.